Hey guys, Michael here from Dapper Raptor, and today we're going to take a look at Blueprint Interfaces. Now over the next couple of videos, I'm hoping to explain to you what Blueprint Interfaces are, how to use them, and why you should be using them. And I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that if you are unfamiliar with Blueprint Interfaces, once you understand them, you're going to completely change how you work in the engine because they are a really powerful and very underrated tool that people who uh, do not come from a programming background just seem to not be familiar with. And part of this is on Epic because Epic don't really cover them in their engine onboarding tutorials. Um, but a lot of it is also the community tend to just work around them because it is a little bit quicker just to use casting. It is, it is a little bit quicker just to use hard references and such. If you don't know what those things are, we're going to go over them in a second. So I'm just going to show you this little demonstration level I've got here. It's just a very simple interaction system. Uh, the player walks up, they can press E to open the door, they can press E to close it, they can press E to make the ball bounce, and they can press E to press the button. Now, this is a really common system that you're going to be able to find a bunch of tutorials on how to make, and it will be very, very similar in most cases. There may, or there are tutorials out there that do cover how to do it with interfaces. This is not necessarily about how to make an interaction system though. I'm trying to use the interaction system as an example of where interfaces can be used and why you should be using them. So if we take a look in our controller, this is the crux of our interaction system here. When the player presses E, we do a trace for the actor and then we do some logic depending on what sort of actor it is. Now, if you are making an interaction system, you can use a line trace or an overlap. There is no right or wrong way depending on what you're doing. Um, in most cases, overlaps are going to be better. We're using a line trace here for a couple of reasons that we'll cover in future videos. But all we're doing is just tracing from the camera at tracing from the camera location forward at this distance, which is 500 units. And if we hit something, we get we pass the reference to it. If not, we don't. From there, we do our casting. So casting is basically where you take the target object, in this case, our hit actor, and you tell the engine to try and treat it as a specific class. In this instance, we're going through, we're treating it as a ball. If that doesn't work, we're going to treat it as a door. If that doesn't work, we're going to treat it as a button. And at each step of the way, if it does work, we're going to call that object's specific interaction event. So we can have a look at those as well. For the ball, it just shoots the ball up in the air a little bit. For the door, it just goes through some logic to work out whether it's opening or closing the door and then does the door animation to rotate it. And then finally, for the button, it checks if the button is not pressed, then it presses it and does the animation. And then after a short delay, it reverses the animation. That's all well and good. That's a great way to prototype using things like casting and such. Um, and it's going to be really quick to set up. However, you're going to, let's start with the one that's going to impact you directly. Once you end up with, say, 20 or 30 different actors that you want to interact with, you can imagine this is going to be a really, really long chain. It's going to be really frustrating to deal with and even more frustrating to debug if something's going wrong to find the right node. That's one reason you might want to avoid casting and systems like this and look for something like interfaces. The more important one, though, however, is performance related. If we hover over this cast node here you'll see that it says down the bottom note this will cause the blueprint to always be loaded which can be expensive what the what that's talking about here is that this reference here is what's called a hard reference now a hard reference is a reference that is pointing directly to a specific thing in this case it's pointing to this object here and because it's a hard reference that object is actually going to be loaded entirely in memory whenever the controller is loaded. We can see this by going to our controller and right clicking and going reference viewer. Objects on the left are objects that are referencing our controller. So whenever this game mode is loaded, the controller is going to be loaded. Objects on the right are objects being referenced by the controller. So whenever the controller is loaded, the character is going to be loaded. That makes perfect sense. You want that. You don't want your character to be not loaded. But we don't want these guys to always be in memory. We only want them to be in memory when the engine says, hey, you need to load the door to do something with the door. We don't want them always there. And not only that, but let's say the button is a really good example. 
let's say we have the button set up to open the door and it's hard referencing the door. In here, everything the button is referencing is going to be loaded and the door is going to be here. We go back to our door. We can imagine a scenario where the controller is loading the button, the button is loading the door. Maybe the door has a sound actor or something like that. Maybe you're using an actor to control your sounds. That's then going to load the sound actor that's going to load every single sound and so on. So you can see how this can really quickly get out of control and it can use up a lot of your memory. You can avoid all this by avoiding hard references. And one of the best ways to do that is using interfaces. So what an interface does is you give it a target. In this case, it would be our hit actor and you call an interface of message. We don't have one set up yet. And it says, Hey engine, can you try and do this thing with this target? Instead of saying, Hey engine, I know you're a bull run this thing. It just goes, try and run this thing. If it can run this thing, it will. If it can't, it just won't. And it will go along the next line in the execution line. So you, you by doing that, not only can you get rid of this giant chain, because we can just have one thing here that says interact. You can also stop all of these actors being loaded all the time and have the engine only load them when they need to be loaded. So in the next video, we're going to go over the process of switching this over with an interface. And then in the subsequent videos, we're going to do some more example, uh, more advanced things.